Hello and thank you uh, for sharing your time here today. Time is a really very precious gift that we're all given. It's something we all have in common. The length of time obviously differs. But regardless of whether we're here for a short life or a long life, time is a gift. And how we choose to use that gift will determine whether we're creating a life of regret or a life of joy, and the choice is ours. For about eight years on and off, I looked after dying people. I, I didn't consciously go into that role. I was looking for a job with heart and one that would keep rent or a mortgage out of my life. And so I took on a job as a live-in carer. And uh, the lady I was looking after became terminally ill. And so after I looked after her, at the agency I was working with, said, you know, I did a good job, would I like more training? So suddenly I found myself in this field, I'd never worked in a medical field in any way, and, uh, and I found a real calling to it. And uh, so my, my basic job description was personal care. So I was looking after, you know, meals and um, showering, wiping people's backsides and... Uh, helping them with their medications, all, all the things that, that just become too hard when you are terminally ill. So the people I was caring for were those who knew they were ill and they were in their last three to 12 weeks of their life and they knew they were dying so they'd gone home to die and I was there in their home. And uh, what I found over time though was that my role, the, the physical duties I did were just a byproduct of what I was really there for, and my key role was as a listener. And I didn't realise at the time that uh, so many of my own prayers were being answered because I, I had some of the greatest teachers. And these were regular, humble people, but they were just like all of us. And the difference was that they were at the end of their lives, and so they were looking back over their lives, and a lot of them had regrets. Not everyone but a lot more did than didn't. And those common themes just kept coming at me again and again and, and had a, a profound effect on me personally. And so I listened to their regrets and I witnessed their anguish and their heartache and, and I learnt from them. And I, decided, I, I realised that I was being blessed with these lessons for my own life and that if I didn't try and incorporate these lessons, then I too would regret that. Uh, so having seen the anguish and the pain that these people suffered, I wasn't willing to do that. So whatever it was going to take to go in a different direction, I was, I was willing to do it. So how do we do that? You know, how do we actually get the courage? Almost every regret came down to a lack of courage. So you know, how do we actually get the courage to start living true to the song that our own heart is singing and, and to honour that calling. One of the first things we can do is face the fact that we're going to die. You're going to die, I'm going to die. There's no, no negotiating on this really. I mean, you know, maybe times will change, but history shows that, you know, generally we are going to die. And... Uh, I mean, you know, perhaps with reincarnation you can think, oh, it doesn't matter if I don't get around to it in this life, I'll, I'll get around to it in the next life, you know, or when I come back. What if you don't come back? Or what if you come back in a body that isn't going to enable you to do the things that you want to do in this life? What if you come back as a duck, you know? <laughs> you don't know. So regardless of your beliefs beyond death, the fact is that in this lifetime as who we are right now, we're on limited time. And rather than face death as, as a huge, um, you know, terrified aspect of something looming and, and shut the door on it and don't, don't deal with it until we have to, let's use it as a tool for living. Let's talk about death and accept that it's, it's a big part of our soul's journey. It's a, it's a part of the process. And if we can look at death and realise, okay, we are going to die. I mean, some of us won't be here in a year's time. Some of us won't be here in 10 years' time. You know, not many of us are likely to be here in 100 years' time, okay, that are, that are here today or listening. So what do you want to do with that time that, that you've been given? You want to live true to your heart. You don't want to deny who you are and, and who you're here to be. 
So it takes a lot of courage, and one of the first things, other than facing the fact that you're going to die, sorry, um, is finding a, finding ways to honour that that courage and and how to be to be brave enough. You, you've got this calling in your heart. Every one of us has it, and it doesn't matter how you can you can suppress it through busyness or through addictions, through whatever else works for you. But ultimately, you're not going to silence that song, and you can put all your energy into, into trying to silence it and to serving fear, or if you want to re uh, create a life at the end that doesn't have regret, then you, you need to find the courage to, to start honouring that. So one of the first things we do, besides, as I say, face the fact that we're dying, is use, use death for, as a tool for living, but start being more gentle on ourselves. Start with compassion. Compassion for everyone, you know, is, is just such a powerful, a powerful force within the world. But compassion has to start with ourselves. So we have to take the pressure off ourselves and realise that, um, that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be not perfect. Look back on things that we've done with gentleness and compassion and just think, okay, well, that's who I was then. I'm going to look back on that person. So if there's something that you could regret now, and, and plenty of people, most of us will think of something, oh, like, gosh, you know, I really regret that. Well, don't regret it. Just look back on it with compassion and think, okay, well, that is who I was. That's not who I am anymore. I'm going to have compassion for that part of myself because if I can recognise that, that there's a regret or a so-called mistake in what, I, what I've done previously, well, I'm obviously not that person. I, I've evolved and... I'm more emotionally mature to, to even recognise it. So we start by being really gentle on ourselves. And, you know, some of those, um, some of the ways to do that, I mean, there's endless ways, but start giving yourself permission to enjoy your life and to do some of the things that you love to do. Now, this isn't about abandoning your families. It's not about being selfish. Self-love is not about not caring for other people. This is something I, I really want to be clear. Um, you know, you can often hear people say, oh, you know, you know those people that are right into self-love, they're selfish buggers, as we'd say in Australia. But it's not that at all. If, if people are thinking that, well, they haven't reached that, the openness yet to, to actually realise the whole concept of this. Self-love is, is not about not caring for other people. Self-love is about caring for yourself as well and treating yourself with that same compassion, patience and gentleness as you treat other people with. So in order to do that, you have to honour some of your own needs. And so you listen to what your heart wants. I mean, today, for example, I spent 15 minutes just lying on the autumn leaves over in the park because I, I loved being here, but in the, in the lunch break I just thought, I, you know, I'm a country girl, I need... I need some connection here to feel myself. So, you know, I could have stayed and, and chatted and done lots of things, but instead I know for my own well-being I have to honour myself by doing that. So, you know, it takes saying no. It, it takes cleansing rela certain relationships from your life. And those relationships that are authentic and... Uh, that, are, that are truly emotionally mature enough to allow you to be who you are. They're the ones you want to keep in your, in your life because they will evolve with you. Others will come and go. It's, it's you know, the law of impermanence that things do change. So you start honouring some of the things that you want to do, a lot of the things that you want to do, because ultimately, the more you can face this and um, get into the habit of, of saying no to things, setting new boundaries, giving yourself some of your dreams. I mean, we'll, we'll never achieve all of them because we're, our dreams are always expanding. And so there's, you know, you don't have to have the pressure that one day you'll, you'll reach this stage and new beauty, everything's perfect, you know. There's, perfection doesn't come by achieving this goal. Perfection comes in small moments on a day-to-day -day basis by making conscious choices about how you're living your life. And this is how you do it, on a daily basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. Just think, OK, if I do this, am I going in the direction of my heart or am I going in a direction that's going to create regret? You know, which, we have a choice here. 
So you just keep going one step at a time in, in gentleness, with compassion. You take the pressure off yourself and then in time you end up doing, and because you become such an example of that to yourself, you naturally do that to other people as well. But if you only serve other people and you don't learn to serve yourself, then obviously it's going to become unbalanced and uh, you know, it can lead to resentment, it can lead to regret, certainly, um, and it can lead to burnout. And I, I say that from experience. After eight years with dying people and I was just giving and giving and giving of myself, I, I went through a, a major burnout after that. And life forced me to learn how to receive and not only to receive from others and to be humble enough to admit that I needed help, uh, including food vouchers from charity shops and sleeping in my car because there was no roof over my head. Um, you know, life teaches you to receive, but, but it also taught me how to love myself with the same gentleness and patience and compassion as I had given to my patients. So one of the beautiful things, or one of the numerous beautiful things about learning to treat yourself with that same gentleness is that in time, you still get called to serve because your heart will always want to serve, but we need to serve ourselves first in order to serve in our fullest potential. There's, you know, there, there's so much we can give and give and give, but if we have the courage by facing death and accepting, you know, okay, we're, we're going to die, I want to live this really a very authentic life, I want to honour where my heart's leading me. Now, you might think, okay, well, my heart's leading me to spend a month in Australia on a surfboard. Beauty, do it, you know. The, the best um, reverence we can show for this gift of life and this gift of time is to enjoy it, is just to enjoy our lives fully. The happier you are, the more open you are to your guidance anyway. So get out there, do your surf, surfing holiday, do things that seem absolutely irrelevant to service of others if that's where your heart's calling you because ultimately the more connected you become with your heart's longing, the more it will eventually lead you to service anyway. But it will be in a field that will bring you joy as well because service isn't supposed to be about sacrifice in a way that is unbalanced. I mean, to serve with passion and love and enthusiasm is, is what it's about because it's not only the pleasure then of, of giving, it's, it's learning to have the pleasure of receiving and that receiving will come through the giving but it will also come through the surprises that life will bestow upon you. Uh, I've, I've taken a lot of enormous risks and uh, because I've, I know the difference, I'm, I'm going to go this way, I'm going to regret it, or I can go this way, I don't know how the heck it's going to turn out, but this is the way I'm being guided. And so I, I've done it and, and you know there's, there's fear and you don't understand why you're being called a certain way, but eventually it all reveals itself and you are rewarded in ways that you, you cannot possibly imagine. You know, you, you, we couldn't orchestrate how perfect life is lined up for us, really. So, we can look at regret and, you know, we can look back at who we were already. We can look back at mistakes we've made. I can certainly think of things I've done in my life and think, oh my gosh, you know. Um, the way I've treated my body, the way I've treated other people. But we can also look back on it with gentleness and compassion and think, okay, well, I'm not perfect. I'm doing the best I can. But in order to, to be the best I can, I need to be courageous enough to honour this calling, even though I don't understand it. So if you need to, you know, th there's times, well, there's... There's billions of times we'll go through where we're given lessons in surrender, where we have to let go of the need to know the outcome and the need to, to try and control the outcome and just trust that, okay, our heart's leading us here and we think this is the direct way to go. But life's saying, go this way, and you think, well, that's not actually the way my heart's leading me. But for some reason, it's going there. I'm, I'm just going to have to let go of my version of what I think is ideal and perfect because my, there's something in my heart is pulling me this way instead of this way. And so by doing so, you step back, you have faith in the big picture and trust that 
somehow, somehow, in time, it will all be revealed. And it is, in time. But in the meantime, you don't want your whole focus to be on working out why you've been called this way when you, know, you still want to be going back that way. You, you know, you've, surrender is about trust and it's again another form of courage that will be rewarded. So you go this way and you just keep going one step at a time. But eventually, the more you, you start living this way, the more you actually let go of the outcome anyway and come back to a place of presence and a place of gratitude because you realise that those moments of joy and perfection and bliss are not about achieving this goal up there or down here or whatever. They're about having the courage to, to honour your heart. And, you know, you can just be walking down the street and for no reason at all, you just get hit by this wave of bliss and think, I am so happy, you know, I've, I've got absolutely no idea right now why I'm so happy. But in this moment of 10 or 15 seconds, you know, I, I am just in a state of absolute bliss and gratitude. And these, these are some of the rewards. There are so many physical rewards that fall into place as well. But those moments of, of bliss and encouragement and synchronicity and the people you meet and the connections you make with other people, they are the rewards that in the end become far more important than the reward of achieving any particular goal. But you still will achieve the goal, it just may not look exactly as you first conceived it. So to live a life free of regret, we need to face the fact that we're going to die. We are. And that we have power of choice and it's up to us to use that pow power of choice as wisely and as consciously as we can, but, through a, but from a place of kindness and gentleness and compassion towards ourselves, which will then, of course, flow out to, to everyone else. So, thank you. <laughs>